now I'm just waving at the camera. Everyone knows what I do. I sit here and I wave. We're already live and I'm still waving. Um, everyone knows how it works. So for episode 48, welcome. You know the gig. You know what we do. It's 8.30 a.m. Come on, Josh, you're better than that. 8.30 a.m. A-E-D-T, A-E-S-T, whatever. And our amazing guest today is Alexis is in Adelaide. So we're saying true to local time, 8 a.m. Coffee with Campus Consultancy. This morning, if you're joining us in just a moment, I'll introduce you to Alexis and we'll dig into all of her expertise and experience and passion around the topic for today, which is how can we help support women in STEM? How do we help them thrive? What is it that all of us can do, not just women in STEM, but as non-women, as non-STEM, as everything in between, what can we all do um, to promote an industry that's really important and that's interestingly in the news as of today and this morning? Some really interesting developments around STEM and what the universities are doing and moving in that space. So lots to talk about today. We'll get into all of that and more. If you're joining us, say hello, drop into the comments below, uh, ask your questions, share what you're doing, give us the highlight of your week. What are you drinking in your coffee or tea this morning? Let us know what you're up to. And after this quick intro, I'll introduce you to Alex. Alexis. <laughs> Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you, Alexis? I'm very well. How are you, Josh? Very well. It's nice to have a chat with you, albeit not in person or on campus at the be beautiful University of Adelaide like we're used to, but nice to chat nonetheless. Yeah, absolutely. We're getting used to this Zoom business now. Aren't we? Aren't we just? <laughs> Alexis, I'd love to dive straight into today. You've been amazing. We've got five takeaways we want everyone to get out of today, so we'll make sure we get through all of those. But I'd love just to start from hearing from you. Um, how did you get into and when did you get into this work? And yeah. why are you so passionate about diversity in general, but also specifically the programs that you, that you run that are amazing? Absolutely. Um, well, I, I studied um, at university um, international relations and development and mm -hmm. I think it became pretty clear um, while I was studying that well I guess it's, it's hard not to become passionate about women's issues when you're studying international development mm. um, you know I think you can see pretty clearly how um, you know if if women were supported and empowered in all ways of life that the world would be a very different place and so I guess that sort of you know, growing up in a strong family of women, um, already sort of having that fire in my belly, studying international development. Um, I did a consultancy for you and women, and I think that's probably what kicked off the STEM piece for me. So um, I helped the executive director of UN Women um, wow. prepare for a fellowship that was around, um, you know, barriers facing women going into roles in tradition non-traditional areas such as STEM. And um, it became very clear that there was a big problem here. So, um, you know, then, then came this role um, at the University of Adelaide where we pitched for a WISE grant and um, we are now working in the Women in STEM area at the University of Adelaide, um, managing diversity for the Faculty of Engineering, Computer Science and Maths. Yeah. And that's, that means a whole range of things from primary school to high school, um, but probably the, the majority of what I do is look after the Women in STEM Careers Program, which is for our current students to, to go through a 12-month program of personal and professional development. So that's um, where I spend most of my time and most of my reading and where all of my passion or a lot of my passion is at the moment. Yeah. Amazing. When you were studying your degree and looking at issues all around the world, was there a particular reason that you zoned in and focused on STEM um, as an avenue for growth and development um, for women professionally, personally in the workforce? No, I mean, um, while I was studying, I did, you know, lots of stuff. I, I went overseas and worked for a nonprofit um, who sort of fought, did a lot of stuff in education. But again, what sort of I zoned in at that point was um, you know, zoning in on the rights of the Makila workers in Central and South America. So all of the factory worker rights and, mm. um, you know, helping women to, you know, get paid to get um, equal work rights and so on. So um, STEM didn't sort of come to me until, um, you know, quite recently. And, you know, I think it definitely needs 
a lot of support and um, you know we need to turn this around because there's there's so many amazing women that are doing so many amazing things that we need to bring to light there's so yeah. many amazing women that want to do amazing things but there's barriers for them and we need to break them down yeah, no doubt. Um, one of the, I love to jump into some of these tips that we want to talk about, and, and I think that'll frame the conversation nicely. One of the things I'd love to know there is from a starting point, what do you think culturally, um, what do you think culturally, whether it's within a faculty, within a program, uh, within a workplace, um, what do you think the state of play is culturally for women in STEM currently? And are there, have you seen any really great initiatives? Have you seen some great changes? Are there some very pressing barriers or obstacles that, that keep popping up? Um, yeah. What's your, what's your sort of take there on the, on the culture of it? Well, how about we kick into to my tip number one, which is around Sounds culture, good. Josh. Um, so what we wanted to talk about today was five things we can do to support women in STEM. And I just wanted to, um, so to think of some really practical solutions and some ways that um, everybody can get involved in because this is this is everybody's everybody's responsible for this, um, whether you think so or not. So um, mm-hmm. working hard to improve the culture is my number one tip, and this is kind of a big one. So we've all heard the buzzwords, you know, of unconscious bias and calling it out, and you know, um, unconscious bias is something that everybody has and um, it's nothing to be ashamed of. And I think it's, it's really an, an interesting topic to explore. Mm. Um, I have it, you have it, Josh, everybody has it. And yeah. there's a cool, um, there's a, an online poll that you can do if you're interested um, on the Harvard website. It's called the Harvard Implicit Bias Test. And, um, you know, it's a little bit shocking, I think, when you receive those results and you're like, oh, yeah. okay, right, okay, this is what we're dealing with here. We've done a version um, of that before as well. Yeah. It's really interesting, isn't it? It's super interesting and, you know, it's just about that it's nothing to be ashamed of. Everybody has it. Everybody is, like, raised a certain way. Everybody has opinions. Everybody is influenced by things, whether it's, you know, social media or, you know, as I said, as they're raised, they're... Um, Mm. movies everything everything can influence you so you know be be curious about your unconscious bias don't be scared of it and once you understand where your biases sit then you can really start to check yourself and just sort of reframes your thinking I think Mm. and once you start to consider that you can you can make some changes and that yeah yeah also and from like a cultural standpoint what are some practical things that people can do? What have you seen work? What have you heard from some of your women in STEM careers when they've gone into the workplace? What practically works? Like when people say improve your culture, I mean, culture means to care. It's a root of that word. Like you can always care more. You can care in different ways. You can care for more people. What have you seen work? What are some practical changes that you've seen yeah. um, move the needle? Yes. So, um, you know, organisations do unconscious bias training. That can certainly work and help. There's so many um, amazing providers that can provide that for, um, for workplaces. If you're in university, um, I have seen some universities offering unconscious bias training as well, which I think is really helpful. Um but just being curious, being curious mm. about people and just trying to understand other people's where where they come from and um, mm. the way that they work and how how everybody's differences are valued and important and I think I think curiosity is kind of the core of it because yes. if you are curious and interested enough to listen to somebody else's experiences then you, you're going to know where they're coming from and you're going to start to understand some of those challenges. I like that. So maybe on a really practical note there on that first tip, it could be do the tr- check out the Harvard implicit um, bias mm-hmm. training, share that around to your team members, Google it, grab the link, shoot it around to all your team members, put it on the agenda for next week. Yeah. Say, yep, hey, sure. 15 minutes pre-work, we're doing this, 15 minutes, we're just going to have a conversation. It's not That's about so calling cool. people yeah. out, but yeah. can we just, let's, let's talk about it. Um, yeah. And people might do it and you don't have to agree. You might look at it and go, that's that's rubbish. That's we don't believe for that. And that's okay. Like you can have those opinions. But I, exactly. I always think better to put it on the table. Um, yeah, for 
than to than to hold it back. Um, exactly, and, and then everybody's on the same page. And you did exactly. touch on calling it out, and I I do believe that that is important. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be controversial. It doesn't have to turn into something, but. You know, if somebody says something to you that you find offensive or inappropriate or just uncomfortable, then Mm -hmm. of course you're within your rights to call it out. But I think something that is maybe even more powerful or equally as as powerful is if you Mm. observe something and somebody else doesn't, you know, if it's really difficult for the person who um, is receiving something that's uncomfortable and, you know, it can, it could be anything, then it's it's really powerful for somebody else to say, hey, you know, we were in that meeting before and what you said, it, it made me feel uncomfortable on behalf of this person. Mm. And just have a little conversation with them about it. I think it's important to to be able to call things out. Yeah. I love it. So talk about it, I guess, is one way or another, whether that's one-on-one or in a yeah. group, can be a really practical yeah. way to improve. Um, and also that talking about it brings people together. And I know your mm-hmm. your second tip is sort of about the power of not doing this alone. Do you want to share a little yeah. bit about your thinking yeah. there? Yes. So step number two is to create a community of like-minded people. So in the Women in STEM program, um, one of the amazing byproducts, and I think um, we didn't sort of understand the value of this in the beginning of the program, um, but we create a community of like-minded people. So each year we bring together 100 female STEM students at the University of Adelaide. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the young women walk into the room on the first day and go, I've never seen so many females in one room and I can't believe they're studying at my institution. So, That's beautiful. You know, so all of these people are here for each other, but they don't know each other. So to be mm. able to bring them together is so powerful. These mm. girls, young women, I should say, um, they're going to be studying together. They're going to continue through uni together. They're going to go out into the workforce together. They're going to be hiring each other in the future. Let's bring them together now. You know, this the, the power of the community, of the WISP program is – it's unbelievable and I think this could be applied anywhere if you're if you're listening and you're in high school you're wanting to get into STEM then create a lunch club talk to your science teacher your STEM coordinator yes bring the like kind of people together talk about how you can you know do the technical um you know do all your technical things together you know do projects together do holiday programs together and then university obviously you know there's lots of clubs there's bring these people together so that you can talk about the challenges and the exciting parts and the the things yes. that people don't know. And then likewise in the workplace, you know, there's so many opportunities to connect and have a lunch club, um, I love a science in the pub. I love your idea there about celebrating too and the fun (laughs) stuff. I think sometimes it can be a little like we want, I don't think that narrative always has to be we're a bunch of people who are all experiencing the same problem. Sometimes we can all have Mm. the same ambition or fun. Like when we were in that workshop, I had the honor of getting to work with um, some of your, your young women in STEM when they were talking about goal setting and planning, like one of the areas was like, what do you guys do for fun? Uh, What do you do for fun? I should say. And someone said, well, I want to go to, I want to go to WA uh, and then a whole bunch of the other women on the call were like, oh, that'd be fun. Like, I'd come with you. And then it was just all of a sudden they're group sourcing a road trip, um, which is awesome. Because, like, if you're going yeah. to work so hard, like, these degrees are bloody hard. Doing STEM yeah, is hard. hard. Yeah. It's hard yeah, hard yakka. Like, mm-hmm. having a group to, to celebrate with I think is cool. And one of the things I, that you made me think of there, I love your phrasing around like-minded people. And one of the... One of the areas where I struggle to understand how does like-minded community and diversity fit together? Because are we saying, oh, should we all value our differences or should we be like-minded? And one of the ways I think about this, um, and I'd love to hear what you think, and I don't know if this is a good way or not or a constructive way. I ask my question, well, what is your mind for? I think your mind is for thinking, which is being curious. It's challenging things. It's learning. It's growing. And so like-minded to me means you might have a disposition where you're willing to be challenged you're willing Mm. to learn you're willing to go outside your comfort zone and that's very different from hanging out with a community of people who have a fixed mindset rather than a growth mindset and so I don't my opinion is when we say and I don't want to misinterpret your words here but a community of like-minded people are people who are hopefully looking to grow and to give but are also willing to be challenged and value those differences and I don't think it means um what's the word 
like all being the same, hom- hom- homogenous, is homogenous. that the word? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How do you think about that phrase, like-minded people? I'd love to hear your take. I guess um, what, what is missing for these, for these young ladies is that like-minded, technical, um, you know, for want of a better word, nerdy, like-minded people. You know, a lot of the girls in the program, um, in the WISP program, like, oh, I'm just, I'm such a math nerd. I'm such a science nerd. And that's what's missing in their life. So, you know, that is what they need. That's what they need. That They need the similar because they haven't had the similar. They haven't had the like-minded. So that's what the community tries. <clears throat> that's what I think the community gives them that they are looking for so much. I love that. Your third tip was around not just a community being a large group of people, but also the power of some of that one-on-one or small group support. I'd love to hear yeah. your love your points there. Yeah, so step number three was um, STEM buddy, STEM mentor or sponsor system. So I think something that is super valuable that can really help is to have high school students um, mentored by university students, university students mentored by older university students, and then um, industry mentoring university Mm -hmm. students. I was going to say bye to my kids who are going to school. Oh, that's beautiful. Of course. Do it. By all means, pause. I can take the reins if you want to jump off. (laughs) No, all good. All right, gotcha. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so that's super important um, for students to really be able to understand what that next step is and inspiring them and encouraging them and empowering them. Um, There's so many um, of our students that are mentoring into high school and so many of the WISC supporters that are mentoring our beautiful WISC students and what that gives them is invaluable. It gives them a role model they don't always have to be females and they're certainly not but um Mm. it gives a role model it gives them you know practical steps you know all the all the things all Mm. the good things about mentoring you know what do you think what do you think stands out there what have you heard from the women in stem careers themselves uh when they've said oh wow that mentor or that buddy or that sponsor like they really had an impact on me what do you think's the difference there between someone who who really does make an impact and maybe someone who who, who isn't as impactful given the, the group? Um, confidence boosting, I would have wow. to say. The biggest thing is confidence boosting and for a professional, <clears throat> excuse me, for a professional to say to a university student, you're going to be an awesome engineer. Mm. That's, that's You can't put a dollar on that, honestly. Like I think so many of these young women go into engineering, go into STEM because they're great at science, they're great at maths, and it's just sort of the obvious next choice. That's that's what you do. You know, I'm good at this, so I'll just keep rolling. And they don't they don't necessarily know what they want to do when they finish and if they're going to be any good at it. So it's for somebody that's a professional in that field to say, to give them the confidence that they can do this and that they're going to rock it, I think that's, that's what is I've heard is super impactful. I love that. I think, I think that's a beautiful and actionable thing that if people are listening to this and they are in the workplace, like if you if you know someone who's on your path, who slipped into the DM this week, sent you a message, asked you out for coffee, is looking up to you for whatever reason, wants to have a chat with you, if you even if you don't have time, or if you see someone post something on LinkedIn or wherever they post, can you put in that comment and say, you know what, like you're on the right path. Like keep going. Absolutely. You're going to be awesome. Yeah. Like, I love that idea of building yeah. confidence. Yeah. Building confidence is such a big part. Mm. We always say that confidence comes from certainty. And that idea, if you think of anything that you're confident at in life, it's because you feel a level of certainty and, and you feel like you can do it. And if you're not confident at something, like I'm not confident at skydiving, that's because I'm not certain. I feel like I could do it and not die, you know? Yeah. So that's an extreme yeah. example. Whereas if you tell someone, yeah. hey, I see something in you, and we're not saying lie to people, but if you see something in people and you go, you know what, there's, it's that growth mindset. It's like, there's a bit of, there's that thing. I see you do this habit or behavior. It's not you, yeah. it's your behavior. And if you keep doing that, like that's going to help. That'll yeah. help people feel that little bit more confident. They'll feel that little bit like, okay, I'm doing the right thing. Someone else Absolutely. sees it in me. Yeah, it's I love universal. That. Yep. That's beautiful. Uh, it's mm. almost like you thought of the flow of this show to work perfectly. Your fourth point, <laughs> which I love, <laughs> if, if I could jump the gun, it was demonstrating support. 
absolutely oh wow that did flow well <laughs> it does flow well it loses the romance when i sort of go wow that worked well didn't it but i mean <laughs> we all have our flaws uh, tell me about it when, when is support i mean you've given a beautiful example when is support done well um and yeah. when can it be done when can it if you've seen it or maybe you've seen it somewhere else it be done yeah. not so well or disingenuously or ingenuously yeah. or not have the impact yeah, yeah. okay Point number four is to demonstrate your support for women in STEM. Um, and I, I've written in my notes, and go out of your way to do this. Oh, I like that. I think um, everybody supports women in STEM. Like everybody wants women in STEM to succeed. Everybody wants more women in their organisations. Every university wants more women. But how are you demonstrating that? Mm -hmm. So, um you know, that, that little sort of grey italicised point at the bottom of a job application when you dig deep, 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 and download the job description and then a tiny little writing says, women are encouraged to apply. Mm. But I think that's really demonstrating that you're supporting women. So, mm. so my point is, like, be loud and proud about it. Find different ways to get to get to these women to encourage them. And mm. I think that's what... Um, that's what I believe our partners do for the Women in STEM program. So, you know, perhaps our partners don't have as many women in their organisation as they want. I think that's pretty, pretty, um, you know, fair to say. And so the traditional ways of, of getting to these women through, I advertised a job on my website, you know, why aren't they applying? I think this is a way, this is a different way to target the people mm. that you want in your organisation or in your university or in your school or in, wherever you are in the world um, is demonstrating a different way, finding a different way and and being inventive about it. So, um, so what have I put in my notes? Um, I think to, yeah, so for our partners, they come from our events, they they bring their staff, and they show support, they sit on panels, they provide life experience, they give feedback to the students, they they care and they invest and they keep coming back and they build relationships. And, mm. and this is the way, this is a different way. This is, but, but I think on the whole, what the students get from that, obviously they got, I think a lot of personal and professional development from that and a lot of confidence and a lot of brilliant things. But I think what the organisations get from that is this goodwill that these people care. Mm. And then they see their logo and then they see the jobs come up and they're like, oh, they'd be a good place to work actually because mm. they care about women in STEM. Mm -hmm. So, so demonstrate it, you know, whether yes. it's in university, whether it's um, on a personal level, you know, Mm. find a unique way to show that you care about women in STEM and demonstrate that. Mm. I love that. It's one of the benefits of that, as you say, the, the goodwill, that carries on for years. I mean, I opened up LinkedIn this morning. I sent you the, the link to join me today, which, again, I'm so appreciative that you did. And in my inbox was a message from a student who I met four years ago when I was recruiting for Teacher Australia. And they sent me a message this morning saying, it's still in my inbox and I promise anonymous person, I will write back to you soon. Uh, and they said, hey, I'm thinking about applying for Teacher Australia. Like, can I jump on a call and chat with you? Now, this is several years after um, mm -hmm. I ended my time working with that organization. And I love them and they're amazing. And we did so much cool stuff in the community. But that that touch point years later is still there. So I think that idea yeah. of when, when you go and you're present, and for that, it was all, we were on panels, we were speaking on campus, we were partnering up with the groups. Like I would have killed to be in front of the women in STEM careers group, you know, and I still do now and honored to be able to be, but years ago when we were trying to recruit, like that's the room of everyone, oh, isn't want, it? Isn't it you know? Yeah. So it's, it always stunned me. I was like, why aren't, why aren't all employers in front of you all, all the time? Um, yeah. And there are some reasons for that, I suppose, which are completely valid. But for me, mm -hmm. it was getting in front of them. And then he, even years later, people will say, I'm interested. Like, how do I get involved? Um, yeah. Even though I haven't posted about the organization in years. Um, yeah, yep, exactly. I love that. You mentioned, you have mentioned partners a few times. I just wanted to, uh, I don't know if it's appropriate or not, but are there any partners that, that you do work with that 
you did want to name drop or who have done uh, who have kickstarted initiatives or done certain things with with you and, and with the team um, where you've seen a bit of creativity or something different rather than the just the standard has anyone gone like above and beyond in a really cool way or yeah. brought something yeah, new to the I table our major sponsor is FA Water and um, you know they're an organization that uh, walk in the walk and talking the talk and Love it. Um, you know I don't I don't know that they necessarily need us you know they are doing amazing things independently mm. um, they have a amazing women's network they have an amazing lgbtqi network um they they already have some really brilliant numbers and some amazing women in leadership um but every single time we have something they send their best they send their brightest they Mm. are so engaged um and you know we've been able to create some really unique experiences for the students through some of their amazing staff ideas and you know some boardroom we we did a boardroom lunch last year and so many senior leaders came and listened to the experiences of the students and and you know some of the barriers that they were finding and some of the some of the things that they were finding challenging and or um you know they were concerned about going into the industry and you know they sat there for a couple of hours and listened and talked and wow I you know we're not doing huge you know um we we do some large events but i think the most impactful ones are those smaller scale well thought out really considerate um touch points with smaller groups of students that are really impactful yeah and yeah we've had some some really amazing experiences with sa water that's cool i love that point of the the sort of higher ups for lack of a better word you know the sort of thing where a second year student goes home and their housemates are like so what happened today and you're like i talked to the like cmo of this company or i talked to like the yeah. head of finance or yeah. i talked to the, like the, it's a talking point over dinner um yeah. <laughs> and i think that's how do you how do you value that brand equity like that brand is then being held up um yeah yeah amazing and yeah I'm, i absolutely can't fault them they've just that's awesome. They're, they really do talk the talk and walk the walk. It's really I love great. That. And it, you know, it comes from the top down all the way through. Everybody everybody feels it. <laughs> mm. And we've covered four or five points today of ways that we can support women in STEM, practical, actionable things we can do. I love that you mentioned walk the walk and talk the talk. And your fifth mm. point was about the power of role modelling. So I'd love to hear your take there. That's right. So final point, um, and I love this one, is be the role model you wish you had. Yes. I mean, how powerful is that? Um, if you are a woman in STEM or if you are anybody in STEM, you you just need to be the role model that you wish you had. So mm. talk about it. Talk about it to your kids. Talk mm. about it to your daughters. Talk about it to your neighbours. Talk about mm. what STEM is. Um, you know, you, you don't have to be female to be to be a role model in this in this point, I guess. Yes. Um, what do you think it means? What do you think it means to be a role model, like to set an example that that women in your program or in any in any sort of form in STEM, what do you hear that they're look? What are they looking for? What is it that they that when they see someone who's doing X that that makes them go wow I could like I could do that too or I could do that at an even higher level like what what speaks to students? I think what speaks to students is seeing people ahead of them, like seeing females ahead of them. So yes. they want to see that women have got further and further and further ahead of them, so that they can see that's possible. Hmm. You know the old you can't be what you can't see. That is that's exactly what that is in practice. So hundred percent. You know they. Being a role model doesn't mean you have to be the best at it or you have to be perfect or you have to be super senior, you know, oh, I can't be a role model, I'm not senior enough. No. Being a role model just means showing up and sharing with the world what you're doing and being there and being um, visible. You know, mm-hmm. again, these, these women are there, but maybe we're not putting a spotlight on them. I love and the be visible that point. Yeah, absolutely. If someone's watching right now, 
Yeah. And, you know, if something like one of the things that we love about the network of working with getting to work with lots of universities, including the amazing University of Adelaide, is we get to see students a couple of years later now, which has been amazing. And I guess it must be hugely rewarding for you to see it, it sure is. <laughs> you know, but like to now see women in STEM in all sorts of different careers doing all these amazing things. How does what does it take for them to be more visible? What could what can they do? What can anyone else do? I suppose that be the role model you wish you had is a very like individual what could I do yep. what so what could an individual do to be more visible to put themselves out there in a way that's tasteful which always comes up but also is is unashamedly like hey guys this is possible um, yeah I think LinkedIn is a really great stepping stone to that I think mm. um, you know you can you can start posting you can expand your network you can become visible that way if yes. if uh, sort of going out there and and being visible in person is a bit uncomfortable, which it is for a lot of women. And a lot of people don't want to, you know, go out and big note themselves, right? Yeah. I think LinkedIn is, a, is probably a really good stepping stone to that. But something else that I think is really cool in the, in the um, organisation world is the panel pledge. Um, the panel pledge is, yes. is cool. It's, it's about, um, you know, gender equity on, on all panels and I think um, men can really help with this one it's a male champion of change um, um, what do they call it you know it's one of their um, initiatives there we go Ooh, it's a bit early for me <laughs> <laughs> um, and that is the way that you can support women in STEM to become role models is to you know you get asked to be on a panel for something and your first question back to them needs to be okay how many females are on this panel and mm. if they say oh uh, uh, i don't know like you know one or whatever then i feel like it's your responsibility to then say you know what keep me on your list but i'm going to pass this one to my female colleague she mm. would be wonderful she's you know expert in space blah 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 um, I think she'd be really good for this one and and sort of pass the baton so that, you know, you're sent, you're sending a message to whoever's organising but also you're helping another woman become a role model and to be visible. I mm. absolutely love that. And it's been really interesting um, even on, even doing this, even having 48 episodes of this show, we've had, I think I've done three solo. We've had 22 guests who identify as female and 20 i think 23 guests who identify as male so i'm yep. slight i'm slightly over with the <laughs> you know so always room to improve but then there's lots of interesting <laughs> metrics of diversity but one of the things i found interesting there is it's funny how sometimes the idea of any metric of diversity will slip into the conversation um mm -hmm. and i'm always there's always another perspective knowing and that's been one of the things that i love all of these guests everyone lives a different life to me so whether it's in adelaide you could be a heterosexual white male doing civil engineering but in Adelaide and you'd have a yeah. different perspective and then I think as you as you pull these different variables apart you're like okay mm -hmm. I don't know what it's like to be a first generation female lawyer living in Brisbane you know yeah. Yeah. and it's oh it's just there's so much to learn and for me that the tool I'm always using there that I I would try to use really proactively is just curiosity I want to learn I want to hear about the experience um, yeah. if I learn something from that amazing but I just want to hear it first um, yeah. And I think you can't you can't hear it. I can't hear it if it's not on a panel, if it's not on a show, if I'm not hearing that voice on a podcast. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, exactly, mm. it's really important to be visible and to be. Heard. And I love the idea too of when you mentioned a little bit earlier on LinkedIn. You know, I know ECMS is a huge faculty. Imagine what it would look like if I don't know. Do you, do we know what percentage of ECMS identifies as female or women in X? Oh, I don't have a real updated mm. stat, but it does sort of sit around 25. Say it was 25, right? And I think there's is about 6,000 students in ECMS, something like that. Yeah. So say if you had 1,500 students and, you know, say half of them are on LinkedIn, 750. Imagine yeah. if we had 750 posts every single day talking about <laughs> STEM, yeah. like a day in the life of. Imagine if there was just a day, a day of the year where the challenge is we're going to have every single female and post about their experience, something they learn, what they're excited about, who they want to work for. Like yeah. imagine the reach of that. Imagine if that was every single day. 
Like it's such a powerful, it's such a powerful platform. It's so positive. It's so positive. Um, It is so positive and supportive. And I mean, that's something that has always really blown me away um, with this, this community in general. Mm. Um, I think I've told you this story before, Josh, where I had, you know, we started the program uh, the Women in STEM program in 2017 and the first event, I was like, okay, we need to get um, people in to help with this event. We've got 100 students. Yes. You know, I'll just put it out there to the world. And so I, you know, emailed a bunch of our contacts through the faculty and I had to turn my event right off because I had more industry than students for this event. I was like, yes. ah, whoa. I thought I was going to have to be like, oh, can, you, can you help me out? I need, you know, I need a few numbers for this event. People are wow. very supportive of women in STEM. So they just want to see people succeed. Yeah. And um, just quickly back on the LinkedIn, um, I can't it. stress enough, like if you are a student, LinkedIn is for you. Like if you are a university student, LinkedIn is for you. Don't think, oh, I don't have much work experience. Like, I don't know. I don't know what I'd put on there. Follow the organisations, get up to speed with what's happening in the industry connect with people in the industry here about what they're doing linkedin is for you i love it (laughs) i love it alexis thank you so much for sharing today all your insights um and everything you do if people if people want to connect with with you find out more about the women in stem career program which i like i I say it every day i preach it everywhere i love it the program is epic um and you know that's not lip service you've seen me talk about it before uh, yeah, if people want to find out more about you, the program, or anything like that, where's the best place yeah. for them to go? Uh, probably LinkedIn. Love it. Yeah, connect with me on LinkedIn. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for today. It's been amazing. Thank you, cool. thank you so much. Always fun to chat. Uh, I noticed Lynn jumped in on the comments. Lynn is doing amazing work uh, running a running a program uh, or running an organization called Picked You in Agriculture and talks about a lot of it is, is women in leadership in the agricultural space, which is really interesting. Oh, so she's jumped up and yeah. said, she wants a copy of this for the team. So no doubt we'll, we'll be sharing that around. Um, and I wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised if you get a message from the wonderful Lynn, who's incredible oh, too. I would so, welcome that. Love it. Well, thank you for today. And everyone, thank you for tuning in and listening. If you're 48 Thanks episodes you. in, let us know what have you got out of it? What have you liked? What have you enjoyed? And from today, the five tips one more time, one, working hard to improve your culture. Two, creating a community of like-minded people. Three, the power of STEM buddies, STEM mentors, STEM sponsor systems. Four, demonstrate your support and going out of your way, going above and beyond. And number five, being the role model you wish you had. Beautiful. Thanks, Alexis. Thank you so much, Josh. Love it. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you later. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.